If you ever uploaded a video on YouTube Abby, you'll see that there's little menu pops up and you have three options for short, upload a video or live. I thought it would be cool to recreate that animation in the YouTube app I created a couple of weeks ago as a floating action button. And that is what we're going to create today. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gal Barzilai. I'm a product designer. In today's tutorial, my dear designer friends, we are going to learn how to create a floating action button animation in Figma. But first, what is a floating action button? Floating action button represents the primary action in a screen. In our use case, it's pretty clear that the primary action on YouTube home screen is to upload a video, a short, or go live. So what you're seeing on my screen is Figma. This is my UI design software of choice, but you can actually apply the same techniques on any UI design software except from Sketch. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. What are we talking about? Always late. I have the main add plus button and I've created the additional three buttons of short, upload video and live. Now, in previous tutorials, we used the position technique to create similar animation. If you haven't watched it yet, you can click on this link up here. In this tutorial, we're going to use the position and add rotation to our animation. Okay, so first I'll take all three buttons and place them on top of the plus button. I'll select them all and make sure they're aligned together. And now I'll make sure that the plus button is on top, so the other three are below it. Let's select the other three buttons, go to our layer opacity and bring it all the way down from 100% to zero. The second step is to create a component. Let's select all buttons again and hit on option command K and name this component FAB, floating action button. Very cool. Let's add a variant to our component and rename the variant. I'll rename the default layer to true and the second variant to false. Using these names lets Figma know that this button has two states. Just like we used on and off before, we can use true or false. And this will give us this cool toggle here for the two states. Now let's make adjustments to each variant with the look we want. So in this case, I like the true variant to look like the default button, but for the false variant, I like the button to look closed and all the other buttons popping up and visible. Let's make this component borders wider so we can have more room to work and see what's going on. So I'll select our button layers in the false variant and bring the opacity all the way up to 100% again. And now let's position them where we want. In this case, I'll position them just like that around the plus button. Okay, this is very important. When you position your buttons, you have to make sure that the layers stay inside the variant. Otherwise, the animation won't work. If the layers are outside, just drag them back under the variant. Now I'll select the plus button icon and rotate it so it will look closed. That will give the user an indication that in order to close that pop-up menu, you will have to click on that button again. Attention, attention everybody, pay close attention. Always remember this rule, in order for our prototype to work, all layers throughout our design must have, but I mean must have, the same name. And now the fun part, let's prototype it. Let's go to our prototype tab, click on the true variant button and drag the plus icon to our second variant. In our interaction detail tab, we are going to say that on click, change to the false variant, smart animate and ease in and out back. That will give us that bouncy animation we want in this case. And now let's drag that plus icon from the false variant back to our true variant and we're gonna leave the same properties. Remember, if you want to preview your prototype, you need to put that button inside of a frame first. So I hold down option on my keyboard and drag an instant of that true variant to my home frame right here and position it in the bottom menu. Now I'll select my frame and click on preview and boy oh boy, check this out. Once I'll click on that plus button, you can see that all other options pops up and if I'll click again on the close button, they are going back down. This technique is great for components, but we want to go the extra mile. What we can do is add an opacity window to our home screen once we click on that plus button. This will help the users to focus on the action they need to take just like in the real YouTube app. With this technique, we don't need to create a component. We can simply create the animation between frames. So let's duplicate our YouTube home frame by clicking on Command D and add an opacity window. I click R on my keyboard and draw a rectangle on top of my home frame all the way down. But let's make sure the navigation menu is on top of that opacity window. I give it a black color and bring the opacity down to 60%. Now let's duplicate the same window to our original frame by holding option on the keyboard, drag that rectangle to the first frame, 
and bring the opacity all the way down to 0%. Again, I'll make sure the navigation menu is on top. And now let's repeat the same design we've created earlier with a floating component. I'll take the other buttons and position them in my second frame. Let's make sure they are on top. And I'll check that false toggle so we will have the closed look we've created before. Now I'll select the buttons again, copy them by hitting on command C, select my first frame and pass them by hitting on command V. Now prototype again. Go back to our prototype tab, select our floating button and drag the plus icon to the second frame. I will say that on click, navigate to the second frame, smart animate, ease in and out back to get that bouncy animation and do the other way around as well with the same actions. Now if you click on preview, our prototype works perfect, the floating buttons pops up and in focus. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. Let me know in the comments below if the floating action button works well for you. You can follow my design work on Instagram. Thank you for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.